Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and coming up here on today's show, I did my best to climb into the mind of Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler and made all of these picks that you're about to see today, including the trades, on what I think those two would do and the latest reports and top 30 visits. Before I show you my Josh McDaniels, that sounds weird, and Dave Ziegler mock draft, today's show is presented by Roan. If you haven't already, head on over to Roan.com. <clears throat> slash chat sports and use promo code chat sports for 20% off your order. Roan's going to help you get ready for any occasion with the commuter collection, which offers the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear. And when you wear it, Roan commuter collection, I know this, you're always going to look great. With Gold Fusion anti-odor technology, you'll be smelling fresh and clean all day long. And on top of that, Roan is 100% percent machine washable so you can ditch the dry cleaner altogether. The commuter collection get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to roan.com slash chat sports and use promo code chat sports to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to rhone.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports. It's time to find your corner office of comfort. On top of the reason why I love Rome, I am a big believer of when you look good you're going to feel good. On top of that, when Alex is like, hey, let's go. We're going to be late for our dinner reservation. I pull out the shirt, and if I don't have to steam it, and if I don't have to iron it, that is a huge win, which is why I love Roan. I look good, simple, and I can wash it so you can ditch the dry cleaner. One more time, 20% off. Use promo code CHATSPORTS. Link available for you guys down in the comments and in the description. So let's look at here the Las Vegas Raiders 2023 draft picks. And... There is a plenty, and last year the Raiders, they made five trades with six picks. So only God knows what the hell is going to happen this upcoming year with 12 total picks, four in the top 100, and then it gets really, really interesting on day three. So in terms of this mock, I wanted to be able to walk you through it with me because, well, I want you all to understand exactly why I did what I did in this mock draft. So Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Top two quarterbacks off the board, Will Anderson, Will Levis, and then Jalen Carter, Christian Gonzalez. But then guess what happened in this mock? Somebody started giving me a phone call, and I was like, man, how the heck did the Tennessee Titans get my phone number? Mike Vrabel, what's going on? I'm looking over there at Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler, and they said, the Titans want to make a deal. This is the deal that the Titans offered me in this mock draft trade. And when I look at the reports, the people who I talk to, it does. It sounds like that the Raiders would love the idea to be able to trade back because if it's not Stroud or Bryce Young, they don't want the quarterback. So my question to you out there is this. Would you do this trade? And guess what? I ended up doing it. The Las Vegas Raiders, you get pick 11. The Tennessee Titans, they get the number 7 overall pick. And they also gave me a second round pick at number 41. So, you're probably asking, Mitch, who did the Titans trade up to get? They selected Florida quarterback Anthony Richardson, which then means the Atlanta Falcons were on the clock. They went Tyree Wilson. Paris Johnson Jr. goes to the Chicago Bears. Peter Skoronsky goes to the Philadelphia Eagles. And now it's the Raiders pick at number 11. But the important thing to remember here is this. I am doing this mock after what I believe McDaniels and Ziegler would do, not what I would do. So with that being said, with the 11th pick in this Raiders mock draft, I'm going to go with Joey Porter Jr. I know a lot of y'all are probably screaming, why not Devin Witherspoon? Well, the biggest reasons, one, Joey Porter Jr. has a top 30 visit with the Las Vegas Raiders. Devin Witherspoon doesn't. When our team was at the NFL Combine, they asked him if he met with the Raiders. His answer was no in terms of Devin Witherspoon. They've met with Porter multiple times. I know this Raider organization likes Joey Porter a lot, and he's from Cali. So all of those reasons are why I could see the Raiders picking Porter over Devin Witherspoon, which now means it's time to get into round two. Pick number 38 here, and because we made that trade, we got two picks really close to each other at 38 and at 41. The way that the board fell, 
I didn't love. So what I tried to do here is look at some more of the notes that I have on players that I know the Raiders are interested in. So in round two, pick 38, the Las Vegas Raiders are going to go with Dalton Kincaid from Utah. 6'4", 240, maybe a little bit undersized in terms of what some people think the Raiders are going to go for for a tight end. But in terms of being able to catch the football, Kincaid can catch the freaking football. He's also from Las Vegas and has met with McDaniels and has met with Ziegler, according to Adam Schefter, at least one time. So you add all of that. They're looking for a Darren Waller replacement. In fact, the only tight end that they have officially met with is Dalton Kincaid. So there you go. That's why I went with them at pick number 38. Let's go now to round two, pick 41. And I wanted to go defense here. And I thought, okay, with the players available, let's look at the Raiders' top 30 visits. So I pick 41. I'm going to go Dayon Henley, who is a linebacker that I know for a fact that the Las Vegas Raiders love. For me, Drew Sanders was there. Jack Campbell were both available in these mocks. I would take both of those players over Henley. But it's Henley's ability to go sideline to sideline and... From what I understand, Patrick Grahams likes his versatility more to be a linebacker that they are hoping can be a coverage linebacker in case this defense wants to go to a 4-2-5 where they're a little bit more worried about Drew Sanders, Jack Campbell getting exposed in that defensive scheme, which is why I selected Henley here at 41, which is a little bit higher than what I would like. But he's met with the Raiders, and they seem to like him quite a bit. So now we got three picks down. Let's go to round three, pick 70. And then we got pick 100, and then 109 after that. With our fourth pick in this mock draft, at pick number 70, the Las Vegas Raiders select cornerback Julius Brents. I got told by a very good source that said flat out, if Brents is available to the Raiders at 70, it's a done deal. At 6'4", 200 pounds, his arms long and lanky, and the Raiders are looking for corners that have length, which then ties in very well with Joey Porter Jr. because the two corners that they signed in free agency in Duke Shelley and David Long Jr., they don't have nearly as much length. They also love the fact that a lot of Kansas State players come out and they are very well coached or more pro-ready because that's what that program has done a good job. So Brents is the second corner I took next to Joey Porter Jr., a player that the Raiders have met with and a player that I know for a fact that they like a lot. Now, if you don't already subscribe, take a second. Hit that subscribe button right now because we're going to be live for every single pick. I'm not just saying the Raiders picks. I'm talking... Every single pick of the NFL draft, Jeremy Chuggs and I are going to be live here, and we will get the picks before you see them on TV. Hell, there are sometimes worth three, four picks ahead of what you see on television. We're going to have a good time, so subscribe, turn on those noties. I don't want you to miss our draft coverage. Let's go now to the second pick here in the third round for the Raiders at number 100, but guess what I did? I got creative here, and I am ended up doing a trade that I could see the Raiders doing because there was a few players on the board that the Raiders have met with, and I know that the key word that they love is versatility. So the trade that I have them doing here is the Raiders are trading up with the Miami Dolphins, and there's some ties there with Miami on top of that. The Dolphins are going to be looking for draft picks. They don't have a first rounder. It was forfeited. And I believe they only have four or five in this upcoming draft, so not a lot of draft capital. So the Raiders, they trade up to 84. Miami gets 100 and 141 is what they ended up wanting in the mock draft simulation. And the player that they're going to go with here, yeah, I get it. It's a safety, but he has a lot of versatility in Jamie Robinson from Florida State, a player that they have recently met with in the last week. And from what I was told, it went extremely well. 99 tackles, an interception, five pass breakups. The Raiders ha are going to be looking for a player that they can use in the secondary that they believe could potentially play at corner, can potentially play at safety. I want you to almost think of like the Julius Peppers slash, I'm going to say Julian Love hybrid safety that can do a whole, whole bunch of things in that Patrick Graham secondary. And I actually think that Jamie Robinson could be a very intriguing player in that regard. So I went Julius Brents. I went Jamie Robinson. Those are all of my round three picks, which now means at round four, pick 109, it's time to make a selection. But I couldn't do a mock draft with McDaniels and Ziegler without throwing in another trade into who? 
It's got to be the New England Patriots, right? So the mock draft trade that ended up going down here was a 2023, I should mention, it's a fourth round pick at 109 in return for a sixth round pick and a seventh round pick. Up here, it's a both of these are fourth. So 117 and 135. Yes, I did give up an extra draft pick, but I got told by a very good source that the Raiders are really trying to add higher quality draft picks instead of going three fifths two six and two sevens they're going to use those picks to try to get back up into the fourth and a lot of their top 30 visits that they have it's a lot of prospects that i have round three and round four grades on so i could see the raiders really getting creative around that time frame what do you think of the trade though two fourths in exchange for a fourth, a sixth, and a seventh. But we know Ziegler and McDaniels got wild last year. They did. They made a lot of trades, and it was one of those things, man. It was like, I remember when we were live with Chugs, and it was just all over the place. You never knew exactly what was going to happen next. So with that being said, how many trades will the Raiders make during the draft? I've already done three. Will I do another one or maybe two or three or four? Let me know how many trades Ziegler McDaniels are going to make on draft day. So after the trade with the New England Patriots, we're now on the board here at 117. 117, round four. I'm going to go with a linebacker that has not had an official visit yet with the silver and black, but I know for a fact that the Raiders like this guy a lot. Ivan Pace Jr. from Cincinnati. You want someone that can do a lot of things and has really good college production? Here you go. On top of that, the Raiders like his ability to be able to cover if they needed him to cover, but he's also a really good tackler. So the linebacker I went earlier with was Dane Henley, and now you have Ivan Pace Jr. If the Las Vegas Raiders wanted to run that 4-2-5 system, which I think that they end up doing more and more and more, those are your two linebackers in terms of next year. Like, those would be the two guys that you'd be able to look forward to. 136 tackles, 20 and a half tackles for loss, nine sacks. Ivan Pace Jr. is a name to keep in mind for the Raiders come draft day. Let's now go to round four, pick 135 here for the silver and black. And this is going to be a prospect that has the draft community split. Like, that's probably the best way that I can phrase this. And I'm going to go with offensive tackle Jalen Duncan. The very first lineman that Ziegler and McDaniels wanted to meet at a top 30 visit was Jalen Duncan. He's 6'6", he's 320 pounds. From an athletic profile, you're like, this guy is incredible. And if I'm Carmen Brasillo, I look at McDaniels and say, I can do it. I'm one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL. Trust me, give me a year, maybe two, I can make Jalen Duncan that dude. But then when you turn on the tape... He stinks. <laughs> like, honestly, he's not that good at football. This is a mere upside pick, and you're trusting Carmen Basolo. So maybe the Raiders decide to do it. Let's now go to round five, pick 144 on the clock. Remember, I traded away pick 141 of the Miami Dolphins earlier in this mock draft. So only two fifth rounders. And at 144 off the board, I'm going to go with Carrington Valentine. There are some people that have him as more as a later day three prospect. From what I understand, the Raiders view him more as a fourth slash fifth round prospect. So if he's still on the board here in round five, I think the Raiders jump all over it. They had a top 30 visit with them, six foot, 194 pounds, and the Raiders are going to look to add a lot of players in that secondary. Yes, they signed Duke Shelley and David Long Jr., but those are one-year deals. So I've already addressed... Long arm cornerbacks, and they want guys who they believe can play press man coverage. Carrington, Joey Porter, Julius Brents. It's a lot of press man, which is why I ended up going with Valentine here at round, what is it, round five pick 144. Thank you. Let's go now to round five pick 174 off the board, and we only have a few more picks to go. And I'm going to go with the quarterback that I will continue to say is the QB, if the Raiders don't take somebody in round one or round two, this is the QB to keep in mind. His name is Aiden O'Connell, quarterback from Purdue. Before the NFL Combine, the Raiders had a private meeting with O'Connell. Then guess what they did? They went to his pro day. Guess what? They met with him as a top 30 visit. 
I'm, this isn't a baseball show, but that's strike one, strike two, strike three. I mean, three strikes. I'm going to be paying attention to that. Lots and lots of smoke around Aiden O'Connell potentially going to the Las Vegas Raiders. And if he's there at the end of round five, that's where I, I could see the Raiders pulling the trigger because I think that there could be a late run on QBs like the Jay Caners, like the Aiden O'Connells, like the Clayton Toons. Hell, maybe even a Stetson Bennett, but apparently he might not even get drafted. Let's go to round six now. Pick two. Oh, four. And this is where it started to get a little bit more difficult for the simple fact that there's not nearly as much information out there on the later round prospects. So what I did is I stuck to my notes. I reached out to a few people and I looked at top 30 visits. A player that was still available in this mock draft that the Raiders met with on a top 30 visit. And some of y'all are probably like, holy shit, how much top 30 visits are you going to take into consideration? I mean, if there's anything I've learned from McDaniels and Ziegler, if you've had a past relationship with them in some way or another, that means something. Hell, look at all the Patriots we have. So I look at these top 30 visits, and I look at them very seriously. So in round six, pick 204, I'm going to go with safety Jason Taylor II from Oklahoma State. Yes, I already was able to get a safety earlier in this draft than Jamie Robinson, but to me, these players are a little bit different. Where Taylor, 99 tackles, 6 interceptions, 7 pass breakups. To me, he can be a safety in the NFL, and they're still going to be able to compete with each other. However, Taylor also has that special teams ability. So you go get somebody who can play a little bit of special teams if they can't get on the field right away. That's why I went with Taylor the second out of Oklahoma State, which now means my final pick. In my Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler mock draft, round seven, pick 220, is a player that they have met with officially on a top 30 visit. His name is DJ Johnson. I'm going to consider him an edge slash... I think he would be more of an edge on the Raiders, if I'm being honest. There are some people out there that have him listed as a linebacker. He's an outside linebacker. He'd be an edge rusher on this Raiders team. From Sacramento, California, 39 tackles last season with the Ducks and six sacks. If the Raiders don't love what they have in Malcolm Koontz, because let's face it, he's not a McDaniels and Ziegler guy, look for them to potentially go with a player, long arm, lanky guy in DJ Johnson late, late in the draft. So let's run through my McDaniels and Ziegler's mock. In round one, I have them selecting Joey Porter Jr., cornerback out of Penn State. In round two, 38, Dalton Kincaid, tight end from Utah. Round two, 41, because I made a trade. Day and Henley, linebacker from Washington State. Julius Brents, cornerback from K-State, is at pick number 70. I had the Raiders trading up with the Miami Dolphins to select Jamie Robinson, safety from Florida State. Then in round four, at 117 because I traded back with the New England Patriots. I selected Ivan Pace Jr., the linebacker from Cincinnati, and I also went with Jalen Duncan, the offensive tackle from Maryland. In round 5, 144, I went with Carrington Valentine. I don't have 141 because I traded that away to the Dolphins. Friendly reminder. In round 5, Aiden O'Connell, quarterback out of Purdue. Jason Taylor, the second safety out of Oklahoma State. And then to round out this mock, DJ Johnson, edge from Oregon. So how do you feel if that's the draft that the Raiders ended up getting? Would you like it? Would you not like it? Now's your opportunity to grade this mock draft. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F. I know I'm the one that did this draft. And yes, obviously I had some insight, but I did honestly try to do this mock based off of what I genuinely think McDaniels and Ziegler would do. And if the Raiders were to come away with this one, I would give it an A- minus grade. I like this draft a lot. The area where I'm not going to give it an A and I'm not going to give it an A+, plus is, well, it's this. I would have rather had Devin Witherspoon over Joey Porter Jr. That's a grade in itself. And then I have been saying for a very long time that I want the Raiders to take a DT. Unfortunately, though, it sounds like the Raiders are confident in their defensive tackle room. If they would have addressed the DT earlier, or at all, and on top would have went Devin Witherspoon over Joey Porter Jr., that would be an A-plus grade. But from what I saw from this mock, I like it a lot, and that's why I gave it an A-minus.